Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to show you some 3D text uh, techniques in Adobe Illustrator. I, uh, I got a, a private message from somebody asking me if I could uh, show some of these techniques in Illustrator and so I'm gonna go ahead and show you those right now and I'm gonna show you some kind of basic really cool techniques. Uh, let me also say that I'm dog sitting right now and you may hear them throughout the video. Um, if it's not too bad I'm gonna keep going. So uh, I hope it doesn't bother you too much. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is open up a new document in, uh, in Adobe Illustrator. So you open up Illustrator and then you go to File, New, and um, I just left all the default settings the same and then clicked uh, OK. You can name it if you want. And then uh, then go over to your left and select your, uh, your type tool, or you can press T on your keyboard. And go ahead and just make whatever type you want. Um, I have Myriad Pro selected as my typeface, and I have the font size set to 150 because I want this pretty big just uh, so I can show you guys pretty much. I'm gonna zoom. I zoomed in a little bit. I pressed Control and then the plus sign on the keyboard to do that. Uh, but just so you guys can see a little bit better. So I'm just going to do GDB for Glaze Folio Design Blog. Um, but you can do whatever text you want, obviously. Okay, so once you have your text, you simply just go up to Effect at the top. You have to have your text selected. So click on your text and then go up to Effect down to uh, 3D. And you want to do uh, Extrude and Bevel. The other one, the other uh, options that you have are for, for kind of different 3D effects. This is the one that you want, is the Extrude and Bevel. Okay, so once uh, you click on that, your, your Options box comes up and you can click on the Preview to see kind of how it's rendering it so far. Uh, but we're going to want to change some settings. Um, you, you probably are seeing a box kind of like this. If you click on this More Options button here, uh, it will give you more options. Okay, so I'm going to go through these a little bit real quick, uh, some of the options. Obviously, these ones up here at the top kind of, they either rotate it uh, from left, kind of circular left to right, uh, tilt it backwards and forwards, and then uh, I don't know. You can kind of just play with it. Oh yeah, and then uh, kind of forwards and backwards kind of in space. I'm not sure if I explained that very well, but go ahead and just play with these numbers and you'll see what they do. Okay, and then there's this perspective. You can change that and it, uh, it'll it change the, the perspective of it. Uh, and let me go ahead and before I do anything else, I'm going to change the, the colors on this a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Obviously it's all black right now. Uh, the color, if you have your surface set to plastic shading, you can change your color down here. You can set it to none, which will just render it white like that, which is kind of cool, and I might leave it like that. Or you can do a custom color, and then you can click on the color here and choose whatever color you want. So you can do that. But I think I kind of liked the uh, the none setting. All right. Um, hopefully you can see that. Okay. So there's that, and so here's kind of what happens if you do change the perspective. It just kind of changes, I don't know how else to say it, the perspective. Kind of makes it look like a, a sign or something like that. So we can leave it, we can leave it kind of like that. Okay, uh, the extrude depth is going to be how much 3D effect it has. So if I have mine set to 50 points right now. If you set it to 25, it will decrease that in half. And uh, you see how I, I, uh, I clicked OK there, I pressed Enter. If you need to make changes after you press Enter, just go up to Window, down to Appearance. And then you'll see that uh, in your Appearance panel here, this 3D Extrude and Bevel, that's what you're working on. So you can double click on that, and that box will come back up. And you can click the Preview again, and it'll bring you back to where you were. OK, so uh, just so you can see the effect better, better I'm going to change this Extrude Depth that we just changed to 75, so it gives me a, a pretty big one. And then you can play with some of these uh, these bevel settings as well. There's a lot of different bevel settings, and they will change kind of the the style of your your 3D effect there. So you can kind of see. I'm, I'll go through a few of them, but I'm not gonna. I'm, that's all I'm gonna do for now, because I don't want to waste your time. All right. Then there's uh, you can just kind of change that. That makes it obviously hollow there, which is kind of cool. Okay, the, the next thing that I want to show you is uh, um, the surface setting here. These I like to play with because I kind of like the wireframe setting. I think that looks pretty cool. And I'll probably stick with that after I show you the rest of them. But there's wireframe, there's no shading, 
There's diffuse shading, which uh, it gives you the light intensity and the ambient light. But uh, I think if you're going to go that route, you might as well do the plastic shading because you just have more settings down here. Uh, if you change the ambient light setting here, and you can play with all those. Yeah, and there, I did it again. But if you change the ambient light setting, it's going to uh, give you a little bit more depth, I think. Um, okay. So what I did there is I changed the ambient light setting from 50 to 25, and it you saw what it did. So there's that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move on. I'm going to change this to wireframe because that's the, the setting that I kind of liked. And I'm going to leave the rest the same. Okay, so pretty much that's it. That's how that's uh, the ins and outs of that 3D tool. But I'm going to just, uh, based on that comment I got, I'm going to go ahead and end. And actually, I might as well do the plastic shading based on that uh, the comment that I got, the, uh, the message that I got. So I'll go ahead and leave it like this. I think I'm going to take the perspective down to back down to zero, just so it's kind of like a normal thing. Or it might have been, might not have been zero. Let's go 25 on the perspective. Okay, and then uh, I'll just leave it like that for now, and I'll leave all the rest of the settings the same. And go ahead and please uh, play around with uh, the way that the light's coming in on this ball here. You can change that. And that's kind of cool. But mess around with everything is what I'm getting at. Okay. So now the next thing I want to do is click OK. And uh, and the, the individual that asked me to do this, he wanted to add some designs in there. And uh, the I guess the the only way that I would really do that maybe is I would change the, the front of the of the thing, of the of the text here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a control uh, Control C and then Control V to do a copy and paste, or you can select the object and go up to Edit and do a copy and then paste from there as well. Uh, but what I'll do then is I'll select that. I'm going to go up to my Appearance panel that I opened earlier. If it's not up still, go up to Window, down to Appearance, and that'll come back up. And just take that 3D extrude and bevel layer and just drag it right into the trash can down in the bottom right there. And then the next thing that uh, that I'm going to do, you can do whatever you want, obviously, but I'm going to go ahead and just uh, grab the pencil tool and I'm just gonna make some squiggly lines because I'm gonna I'm gonna use a clipping mask and kind of make some squiggly line text and if you're copying me you can just follow along so to speak alright so that's good for now next thing that I want to do is I want to give that a color so I'll go over to my swatches on the right if you don't see those it's also at the top under window down to swatches uh, I think I'll do an orange color for that line. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to send that line, those lines to the back. So I'll press Control, Shift, and then uh, the the bracket button. But since uh, maybe you don't, maybe you would rather do it this way. You can select the the lines, go up to Object to Arrange, and send to back. And uh, if you go into any of these objects, you can see the, the hotkeys right next to them on, uh, on uh, right there. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is uh, with your text in front of the, the squibbly lines that you just made, go ahead and select both of them and press Control 7 on your keyboard. And that'll just give you that uh, kind of squibbly line text. You created a clipping mask onto your text. And if you want to, you can uh, you can double click on your text and you can change those letters still and yeah it's kind of a cool technique aside from the 3D but then what I want to do now that I have that uh, that squibbly text I'm going to go ahead and click and drag it on top of my letters and what I'm just gonna try to do and I have to bring it to the front so I'm gonna press control shift and the bracket key oh I'm, uh, I'm working in, in that text layer so I actually just double click off to the side and I should be able to uh, should be able to see that again. Okay, I have to go back a little bit because so I just pressed Control Z to get back to where I was because I was working in that that other layer and uh, I kind of messed it up. So I just Control Z back to here, but uh, everything that I told you should be good still. Okay, so I'm going to click on this and I'm going to drag it up to my uh, my 3D text. And I'm just going to try to kind of match it to my text so that I can lay it over the, the letters there, okay? And obviously you can see the perspective and the size is a little bit off, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, with that selected, go up to Effect, down to th um, 
down to distort and transform. I'm going to do a free uh, distort because what you're going to want to try to do is uh, drag some of these corners to match the, uh, the 3D perspective there. So I'm going to do about like that at first and I'm going to make these angles about the same on my free distort and it'll just kind of distort it right into the letters there. And I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. Uh, you can you can do it a little bit better if you want. And uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of drag these in a little bit, the sides, until the letters match up with the, the front of the text. And if you need to shrink it a little bit, you can do that. Uh, typogra typographically, or typography-wise, this isn't really great to alter the text like this, but since you're just making kind of a sign or a, something like that, it's really kind of okay. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend altering text like this if it was, you know, just your plain typography or title text or something. Anyway, so uh, I've kind of I've tried to match it up, and if you need to match it up even further, you can uh, you can turn this layer into outlines. Which if you click on it and press Control Shift uh, Zero, you can create outlines that way, or you can go up to Type down to um, create outlines and then that'll go do it that way and then what you would do is you'd select this direct selection tool and you can click on that then and drag each one of these points kind of wherever you want so I'm not going to do that because that's going to take up a lot of time but um, I'd be uh, happy if, if you're confused I'd be happy to help you in the comments section of uh, YouTube there okay so here's what we have so far and that's uh, that's pretty good you could stop there but I'll go ahead and take it one step farther and let's just add a, a little bit more. So uh, let's go to our brushes on the right here. If they're not there, you could um, go up to Window, down to Brushes, and click on that and that should pop up. And so you can click on your brush tool in the toolbar there and you can kind of just draw a little bit. And that'll make some, you know, whatever brush you're using, it'll do that. So I'll just take those and kind of do something like that and I'll select them both and I can go up to object to arrange and send it back oh I accidentally had uh, other things selected so what I want to do is I just want these uh, lines selected that I just made go up to object arrange send it back and that's one way you can add some kind of style back behind the letters Obviously, this doesn't look very good, um, so you're going to want to spend a little bit more time if you use the brushes like that. Uh, I, I noticed when I was um, kind of going through this earlier that there's some symbols here that look pretty good. Uh, I have a, a florid strokes is what it's called. I'm going to go ahead and use that because that looked pretty good in my when I was practicing. So I just double clicked on it and it opened up that, uh, that layer there. And I can just double click off to the side oh, and it disappeared. So let me do that again. I'll double click on it. And I'm going to just, this time I'm going to select it and I'm going to press Control C to make a copy on my keyboard. Or you can go up to Edit, down to Copy. And then I'm going to go off to the side and uh, deselect. I'll press Control V to paste that layer then. Or it's not a layer, but uh, to paste that, that effect. So what I'll do is now, uh, with both of that selected, I'm going to go ahead and give it the same perspective as the text. And uh, with just that selected, I'm going to go up to Object, Arrange, and send it back. And kind of move it into place. And uh, that's one way that you can add a little bit more style to kind of a technique like this, too. And if you want, since it's kind of um, it's kind of strong, you can select both of them again and go up to the opacity at the top and take it down a little bit to like 75 or something. Or let's take it down even further. Let's go to like 15%. Just so it's just like a hint there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you can just kind of drag it anywhere you want and put it into place. And then that's about it. Of course, you can do anything like this, anything else that you want. Um, you could make a reflection here. I have a tutorial on that as well. So um, anyway, that's, uh, that's the ins and the outs of kind of doing 3D text in Adobe Illustrator. And I think I covered everything that uh, the person asked me to in their, um, in their message. So uh, I'm sorry if this ran a little bit long, but I wanted to cover everything. And uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, thanks for watching. Please click the like button if you did enjoy this, if you learned something. And please follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, thanks again.